All right, guys, so today I've got Terrence's final pull, no, final push, yeah, final push session before he competes at the Arnold. Today is the Tuesday prior to the Arnold. So I'm gonna walk you through this session in just a minute, right after you do the YouTube thing, hit that like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share with some friends. I appreciate everyone that is doing so, everyone that's commenting down below, helping the channel grow. Um, so today, just to provide one, some context. So if you guys wanna watch the whole video through, this is you can decide now the workout is very, very similar to the point where it's exact same workout we've been doing for a couple months, but I'll talk about some of the differences um, because people sometimes want specifics as far as, um, you know, what's the context of what are we doing different now? Because we're literally, like I said, I think we're four days uh, prior to him being on stage. So what are we thinking about now that we're not thinking about two or three months ago? Um, and what does it actually look like as far as working sets, reps, how close are we training to failure, that kind of stuff. So for anybody interested in more detail, uh, again, like sets, reps, stuff like that, that's what I'm gonna discuss. If that's boring to you, then maybe hit mute and just watch them through and look how pretty Terrence looks right now. Um, but anyway, so I've spoke about this before, but getting closer to a show, you know, there's some shift during a prep for everyone. You know, so if you're a natural athlete, it might happen earlier on. If you're enhanced, it might happen a little bit later, but at some point in time for every single athlete, there's a point really where, and there's no clear cut point when this happens, right? But there's a point where you really can't put muscle on anymore, right? You know, there's a point where you're going from, you know, still able to put on muscle generally in the beginning of prep maybe when your calories are still at maintenance or even in the slightest deficit for a short period of time um, to a point where you're really just trying to maintain and then towards the last bit where you're really just trying to hold on to tissue for dear life um, so you realize you know where where is there going to be an appropriate shift as you're getting more and more to that point because if you're doing too much in your sessions um, you could actually make it harder for you to recover in which case you could actually you know support your body losing muscle faster and so there's a couple things where mistakes are, you know, when you're coming to prep, you don't want to think about your workouts as something to burn more calories all of a sudden. You know, the really the thing your workouts are for is first and foremost to put on muscle and then they're for to help you hold on to muscle. And so that's a big misnomer mistake that's out there. You know, some of it I think has been pretty much, um, you know, dispelled where, you know, people know that you're not really doing high reps to carve in the detail, but some people really add in a lot of like intensifiers and things like that. So some people, as they get closer to show, like to add in more drop sets, add in more volume, do more supersets for this notion of more caloric output. And I think some of the context of this comes from some of the largest athletes on the planet. You know, so there are some pro bodybuilders that are so massive that their issue is always conditioning, right? That's never losing shows because they're losing tissue. So for them, it might make sense to just try and create the biggest deficit they can, where they know even if they lose a little bit of muscle or even relatively speaking, a lot of muscle during a prep, you know, if it helps them lose more body fat, that might be worth the trade off. But for most normal human beings, you don't want to do that. Most normal people, you want to do everything you can to hold on tissue and let things outside of the gym create the deficit. So let your nutrition and let your cardio create the deficit. And for everyone, I always say you really want to keep that deficit as moderate as possible, as long as possible. So again, especially for natural athletes, you know, I am much more in favor of someone doing a 16, 20, even 24 week prep with a very small deficit over a long period of time, as opposed to doing something drastic. And even for enhanced athletes, you know, enhanced athletes can get away with more drastic changes without losing a lot of tissue. But even with that, it's not a good idea. I mean, people that are well and meticulous and planned, you know, if you look at the way that things have changed for Terrence over the past several months, there's no drastic changes anywhere. It's only small adjustments, small changes going through the course of the prep. Um, so going through our workout, um, the exercise selection has been exactly the same. So there's no change in exercise selection. The only thing that we dropped probably a couple of weeks ago is any metabolic pump work, which again, basically is once you've used peak loads, once fatigue is set in, you know, normally I incorporate some metabolic pump work. That's where I might use supersets, drop sets, ways to accumulate more effective volume through things other than peak load, but you still have to train close proximity to failure for that to work. So again, why do I pull that out? Because that's extra volume. So at some point in time, the first thing I do is I pull down volume and I always pull down where I think is a technically, this isn't the best way to wear it, but the least effective volume. There's a reason that I have my meat and potato stuff always as the priority in the workout. And then when we're in a surplus, I think extra volume can potentially help drive growth further or faster. Um, but when we get to the point where, again, we got to pull volume somewhere, I'd rather pull it from metabolic and pump work before I'd even take it from working sets as far as the meat and potato stuff goes. So over the you know few, probably at least a month ago, we pulled all that out. Over the past few weeks, we've been pulling a working set here and there. And so I'm walking walk through each exercise, give you an idea of what the warmups look like. I've had questions on that as well, too. Warmups never change. Um, and then from there, you know, what we've been doing kind of for weight, proximity to failure, and number of working sets. So the first movement we did is the incline Smith. 
Um, so again, for anyone new here, I do a band on that just to make a slightly better profile. It's a very light band, so maybe creates 15 to 20 pounds difference from top to bottom. So I just wanted about 15 to 20 pounds heavier at the top. The reason I do the band from the top on this one is it's just more convenient and easier setup for where I want them to come on and off. You guys have seen when I do the JM press variations, some sort of close grip press variations. Normally I put them from the bottom because again, it's a little bit more convenient for the length of the band where I want to put them on. As far as warm up sets go, this is where people always get confused. Warm up sets are so important to keep consistent because again, if we're this close to a show, if a weight really didn't feel good to Terrence, he'd know on his last warm up and say, okay, instead of doing hypothetically 315 today, I'm just gonna do 305 just to play it a little bit safe. And I'd say that's a fine decision because that difference isn't gonna to lead to a significant loss of tissue, but that feeling on that set of staying a little bit safer can obviously prevent an injury because that's for sure, you know, we don't wanna go so light that we're actually doing nothing. There's no stimulus whatsoever. But at the same time, the number one thing we're avoiding at this point in time is the same as always is avoiding injury. And no matter what, I mean, in your off season, even when you're well rested, recovered, everything, there's always slightly a high risk for injury when you're on your top sets. And the same thing when you're closer to the show. So typical warm up on that. So I know the bar doesn't weigh 45, but for easy meathead math, a top set on that for us has been around 325. Um, so a warm up set might look like 135 for 10 to 12, 185 for six to eight, 225 for four or five, 275 for two or three, and then right into a working set of, again, for both of those about 325. And so for Terrence, I think he probably did around eight reps on that. Um, and he probably had one or two left in the tank. So that's literally been the same weight that he's been using for the past five, six weeks. That's pretty much peak strength for him. And now the only difference is if he could have done two more reps, he's intentionally staying one or two reps short of failure. Again, why are we staying one or two reps short of failure? That's another way of cutting volume. So again, uh, Chris Beersley is the one I think termed the, coined the term effective reps theory, which talks about if you're looking, it's not just sets that you need to count for total volume. If you wanna be more accurate, you wanna count the reps that actually change your physique. And what actually changes physique is significant amount of intramuscular force. And it's really on those last five reps, again, whether you're training to failure or staying a little bit short of failure, it's those last five reps-ish. That doesn't, that's not set in stone. So I'm not saying six reps short for sure does nothing or whatever, but as you get closer to failure, that's where you get enough intramuscular force that you're actually creating stimulus for change, or in this case, stimulus to hold on to tissue. Um, so again, if we're staying intentionally two reps short of failure, where we normally would train all the way to failure, then basically that's two less effective reps, which is again, comparing five reps to two short, which would be three reps, you know, that's about 40% less volume if I did that math right. Um, so anyway, you know, we, we don't need that much force production. And also there's a higher level of force production as you get closer to failure as well too, from slower reps, um, unintentionally slower reps. So one, we're having a little bit less intramuscular force production arguably, and we're also having a little less effective volume by staying short of failure. And again, because we don't need that level of stimulus, because everything's progressive at some point, you need that stimulus, like in the off season, but now we just need enough basically to kind of maintain. Um, so, you know, that's typical number of warm-up sets. If anything changes during prep, the only thing I tell Terrence to be aware of is if you feel like you need an extra warm-up set, take it. You know, so if anything, be, I might say literally one extra warm-up set here and there, because the most important set of all those, obviously you start to feel things as you go through your first two, three, four warm-up sets, but that last one prior to his top set is really the most important one to feel like, should I do that top set weight today? And again, should I do that top set weight today is not decided by, am I tired? Terrence has been tired for a couple weeks. It's decided by how do I feel from a muscular standpoint? How do I feel from an orthopedic standpoint? Um, and if you feel good, you're, if you're really gonna find out if you feel good, it's gonna be on that top set. And if for some reason you felt crazy weak, again, not I'm tired or whatever, I'm at a deficit, I'm dragging. If you really felt really off, then the same thing, like I said, if where the goal is to do 325 and you said, hey, I'm gonna do 315 or 310 instead, then that's fine, we would just go with that. But uh, Terrence has felt good the whole prep, so we really haven't made any real weight adjustments on almost anything. Um, so then we did a back offset. So in a back offset meaning uh, we went from 325 to 275. Um, and same thing, Terrence stayed just a little bit short of failure on those one or two reps short of failure. Um, in peak off season, we might add one set there. So if we're looking at what's the difference between now and off season, in off season, we might do three working sets and we have done three working sets in the past. You know, right now just sticking with two. Um, so from there we go into a fly, progressing into the, uh, into the workout now, we only do three warm up sets there. Um, so again, if our top set there is around 100 pounds, I believe, you know, we did a set with 30, 50, and then 70 or 75, I can't remember, you know, for our three warm up sets. Um, and so then there we did two working sets. Top working set was around 100 pounds for, I don't know, Terrence did maybe six to eight. 
And then um, the back offset was, I believe, 70 or 75 pounds and did maybe 10 to 12. And so same thing, um, you know, the only difference in the off season would be those would be taken all the way to failure and obviously long term looking to progress them. And we did two sets there. Um, typically, we would do three. So that's a place we almost always have three sets. So you can see the little drop in volume between those first two exercises. Then from there, we go into an overhead press. Um, so this is another one where I've pulled down more volume. Normally, we do two sets. Um, in this case, sometimes we even do three sets in off season. For this case, we only did one, especially already doing one heavy press with incline. Now with a high incline press, more for shoulders, a little bit of upper pec fibers, we only did one working set. And just so you get a feel for warm-up sets, we only did two warm-up sets there. So again, most people will follow a similar structure. Warm-up should always be more than enough to try and mitigate the risk for injury, but at the same time, um, not doing more than is necessary. So being three exercises deep, it really feels you know quick to be ready at that point in time. And our top working set there, I believe it was 235. And same thing, I think Terrence did six to eight or something, just one or two reps short of failure. Um, then from there, we went to the line cuff lateral raise, two working sets there. Typically, we would do at least three. Typically in off season, we always do an extended set on the third one, so do a drop set or two there. Even aside from metabolic pump work, I think delts respond a little bit better to dense work. So even I kind of keep that within the meat and potato stuff, always having a drop set program in there as well too. Um, and so again, for the line cuff laterals, I believe top set, we did two warm up sets there. Again, only two. Uh, top set, I believe, was maybe for Terrence around 80 pounds somewhere in the six to eight rep range. And then back off set, I believe he did about 60 pounds um, each side for, uh, I'm not sure, 10 to 12, something on that. And same thing, those are still peak loads. That's still the same weight as his top set was over the past, again, five, six, seven weeks. And, um, and again, just staying a little bit short of failure, only two working sets, not three, and only one drop set there, or no drop sets there, where typically we would have some. And then our last thing, we superset two exercises, still done basically, um, separate is straight sets, so taking rest in between, we're really not sprinting back and forth, but as a press down and then a calf raise. And um, so same there, we would normally do three working sets on each. We only did two working sets on each, Terrence staying a little short of failure on both. Um, we only needed one warm up set for each exercise, so only one warm up set of press downs, one warm up set of calf raise. Um, and then uh, typically we'd also do some sort of drop set or super set on that last one of triceps as well too, um, just again for a little bit more volume, a little bit more dense volume. And then after that in off season, we would generally do something for metabolic or pump work, which again, just kind of goes a little bit by feel that day if there's something I want to do more work on. Um, so that's that's the structure of the workout right there. And so that's the hopefully the things I can convey for you guys is yes, things need to change as you get closer to a show. Um, but no, they don't need to train tr change drastically, you know, so all the things are a very similar structure. Again, load tries to stay as consistent as possible. Volume is the biggest variable we change. Again, proximity to failure next is one of the bigger variables that we change. Um, but I also want to harp on why is this so important? Again, especially for natural athletes, a lot of people, because you feel tired, will want to go lighter. But again, you want to change pretty much every other variable before you start to go lighter, because that will be the thing that helps you hold on to tissue more than anything else. And I'm also thinking, I know for a fact, Terrence is going to be doing a minimum of three shows in a row. So we have the Arnold, obviously, which is four days from now, four or five days from now. Um, two weeks after that, we have the Olympia. And then right after that, he's doing another show. He might even do another one after that. Basically, he's going to play it by year at that point in time. Um, but the reason for that is we need to maintain for a long period of time. So one, the same reason we can't blast through the same as we would with off season, being the deficit for so long, we would just burn him out. He'd probably get injured. He'd probably start to lose tissue. Um, he'd be very inflamed. So part of it now is we want to manage inflammation getting close to the show. So anytime you train, your body gets inflamed. So that's obviously a good thing, but we want to keep it as minimal as possible because that will help him come stage time for his muscles basically to look healthier. It will help him fill up better. Sometimes people have a harder time getting a pump or carving up um, if you're very, very inflamed as well too. So those are things where we want to do everything that we can to help him maintain a high level of output so he can maintain tissue, but also having him looking fresh and good coming into every show. Because basically I'm already planning what's his week looking like as soon as he's back to the Arnold. You know, we're going to have maybe about a week of normal-ish training, eight, nine days of normal-ish training before it's right into the Olympia. And so again, it's just some things to consider, not just this show. The Olympia, I mean, both shows are important. The goal is to win both. But obviously, if you know the Olympia is the one we really, really, really want to win, um, so I want to make sure if anything he looks even better for that show at the Arnold, or realistically looks so good for the Arnold, the goal is just to maintain at this point in time. Um, so anyway, that's kind of a little bit more detail of the workout. Hopefully, a little bit of a better idea for you guys 
of what this workout looks like compared to a normal off season workout and even give you some concepts and thought process of what we're trying to do you know obviously for not just this show but knowing that two weeks and maybe one or two weeks after that there's going to be more shows coming and how do we basically maintain a physique for that period of time so Hopefully someone finds that info helpful and obviously just giving you guys some transparency for how all this looks. And uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, give them down below. And until the next one, we've got some more content coming for you guys leading up to the Olympia. And hopefully by the time you guys are watching this, we get something cool to uh, show as a result of all of this hard work and effort that Terrence has been putting in. Peace.